Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello, and welcome to World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. 2021 is a milestone year for China and ASEAN, marking the 30th anniversary of the two sides' dialogue relations. China ASEAN relations have grown closer and stronger in the past three decades through the ups and downs. On July the 30th, leaders from civil Organizations of China and the ASEAN countries held a special meeting online. The meeting wrapped up with a joint declaration on stepping up cooperation and opposing the politicization of COVID-19. In recent years, cooperation between China and ASEAN has blossomed down to the grassroots level. These collaborative strategies include the ASEAN Plus 3 Regional Reserve for Medical Supplies and Public Health Emergencies and the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework. So, could regionalism be the pragmatic and mature approach to the pandemic and economic growth? What's the impact of the regional cooperation on the whole Asia-Pacific? Let's loop in our panelists. For more discussion, joining us in Bangkok, Shang Bu Kung, former advisor to the Thai government, in Tokyo, Lin Tian Wai, adjunct research fellow at the National University of Singapore, in Beijing, Song Qing Ren, associate professor from Beijing Foreign Studies University. Gentlemen, what a pleasure to see all of you. This is a very special year for China and ASEAN, three decades of uh, exchanges and dialogue. But certainly we have seen a lot of changes going on in the world. Uh, Mr. Boon Pua Kong, how would you understand China and the United States both are getting, trying to get ever closer to ASEAN? ASEAN is a major trade region in the world. Both China and United States want to be a part of it. Uh, so, but so far, despite of the COVID situation, the trade during this time with China and ASEAN are doing far better than everybody, almost 7%. Right. And therefore, this is the reason why to uh, generate a bigger global recovery, United States and China I see. need ASEAN. Uh, Mr. Song, of course, uh, China ASEAN, largest trading partner toward one another, uh, how do you see uh, China's approach in recent years toward ASEAN vis-à-vis, -vis, let's just say, the United States? Yeah, uh, ASEAN is, uh, is a very important player in uh, this region and also in the, in the world. And uh, uh, ASEAN is a very important uh, uh, economy, uh, totally. Uh, uh, and also ASEAN is, the, is playing a leading role uh, in regional uh, economic uh, cooperation and integration. Mm. And also, ASEAN is very important uh, in maintaining regional uh, stability and peace. So China, in the past 30 or even 40 years, yeah. uh, plays important, uh, uh, has paid much attention to strengthen our cooperation with China and ASEAN relations. Mr. Lian, we have seen the U.S. Defense Secretary visiting Singapore uh, and also some of the other ASEAN countries over the past week. How do you see the U.S. approach? Uh, it wants to uh, shore up uh, its uh, traditional position uh, within uh, ASEAN, and therefore uh, it reaches out to uh, its traditional partners, uh, strategic partners, uh, as well as new uh, partners. Uh, now, uh, ASEAN, it, when it was formed, is a loose and inclusive uh, organization. Mm -hmm. uh, it continues to be so, but it also sees uh, the merits in engaging uh, both uh, China and the U.S. Uh, China certainly is the largest trading partner, and China is going to be even more important uh, with uh, the uh, uh, issue of uh, vaccine uh, diplomacy and the supply of uh, uh, PPE medical equipment. So uh, ASEAN hopes uh, to work with uh, China on this. At the same time, uh, uh, ASEAN sees spaces uh, in working with uh, other uh, stakeholders in the system. Mm. It believes uh, that these are common challenges that humanity must tackle as a whole, and therefore uh, it extends uh, its hands of cooperation uh, to all uh, major stakeholders in the world system. Mm. And ASEAN recently put out a statement uh, suggesting there should not be politicization of uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, origin tracing. What do you make of that, Mr. Lim? Well, uh, there are uh, uh, countries that are concerned 
uh, that uh, certain measures uh, for uh, tracing the uh, coronavirus, including, for example, the need for proof of uh, vaccine uh, passports, uh, may be uh, sort of uh, discriminatory uh, to uh, developing economies uh, that have yet uh, to, be, to be able to va uh, be vaccinated. So in this sense, uh, uh, China plays a very important part uh, because uh, uh, ASEAN's intention was to have all countries start off with their vaccination program in mm -hmm. April 2021. And yeah. that is on track uh, because uh, China is a, a major supplier of uh, vaccines. And uh, if that uh, happens, uh, uh, also together with peripheral uh, technologies on tracing, which uh, uh, China is able to offer, particularly Industry 4.0 technologies uh, that are digital in nature, then there's a lot of potential for ASEAN to cooperate with uh, China, not just on the vaccine alone, but yeah. also other uh, COVID-19 uh, mitigation uh, uh, technologies. It. China and ASEAN, uh, after their earlier meeting, put out a statement. I want to ask that question to Mr. Bu Pakong also, uh, talking about uh, opposing politicization of COVID-19 uh, origin tracing. Uh, how do you see that statement once again? I think mostly Southeast Asian are so, uh, so difficult to handle uh, the, the, the rapid spread with a new a variant, a variety of them. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many uh, to, to really be bothered with with too much of the politicization for now. Mm. The region need more vaccine, both from China and the West. We barely are holding our own. Thailand has about 17,000 in fact daily, so are Malaysian. Uh, Vietnam, who successfully mm. uh, has done some of their solution, but now up to 8,000 a day. And we have a situation in Myanmar, we have no clue. So a better uh, non-politicized approach to vaccine uh, sharing yeah. in this region, whether it's a new mRNA or even previous Sinovac uh, vaccine that has been really effective in slowing uh, m many it could have been, you know, died from from it. So we are facing a, a dangerous enemy that would last for a long time. Right. A role of China are very, very important for the next generation variants. Mr. Song, of course, uh, your two ASEAN colleagues are arguing, you know, we have better priorities uh, rather than politicizing the COVID-19 issue. How do you see the joint statement from your perspective? Yeah, now the COVID-19 is very serious, not only in Asia, but also in the whole world. So now currently the urgent task for the whole world countries is to collaborate more to deal with the COVID-19, not to politicize this issue to damage the international cooperation to deal with this uh, pandemic. Mm. So I think now uh, our whole world countries should co cooperate more to deal with this uh, pandemic to provide more uh, vaccine to uh, the whole world countries to protect the uh, uh, people's uh, health, to boost our economy, to maintain the international cooperation uh, and the regional integration. Okay. ASEAN countries have been reluctant, by the way, gentlemen, to, you know, uh, be forced to stand in one team or another, for example, in China's team or in the U.S. team against one another. Uh, so how do you see this uh, principle of ASEAN centrality, uh, both in the latest sense and in the earlier sense of uh, ASEAN play a pivotal role in the Asia-Pacific region. Mr. Popakong. ASEAN was formed with the notion of not interference with one another. And this principle have always treated us well when we are faced with a bigger, a bigger global power like China and the United States. And therefore, with a future uh, possibly both ASEAN and a small country like Thailand, we need to be neutral among this uh, confrontation. And therefore, I feel that the ASEAN has to be a, some type of a dialogue to both sides. We need to be fair, but that position is very, very difficult mm -hmm. when we are facing a, a, a sort of a confrontation policy 
from one major power. Right. Mr. Lim, what about that precision that Mr. Bu Pakong talked about? Well, uh, ASEAN, uh, as you know, uh, was formed with uh, inclusiveness. And uh, the uh, phrase that you mentioned uh, often is described as ASEAN in the driver's seat. And uh, certainly for many years, ASEAN has been the driver's seat for regionalism simply because uh, the big powers have uh, issues uh, amongst themselves. Uh, so it believes in functionalism, cooperation and uh, constructivism in helping to pull all this universe of uh, big powers together. In the case of, uh, in the recent case of uh, coronavirus, uh, the uh, phrase that, the technical phrase that's used is uh, uh, vaccine multilateralism. And so this describes uh, ASEAN's approach in pulling in all the major powers and certainly uh, China has a very big uh, role to play uh, because it does have technologies that is that spans across uh, the spectrum of uh, scientific uh, uh, solutions from uh, inactivated virus uh, uh, vaccines to uh, protein-based vaccines to uh, mRNA vaccines uh, as well as uh, other kinds of uh, technologies. So it does have a lot to offer but at the same time ASEAN is also reaching out to for example Russia's uh, Sputnik uh, with uh, Malaysia and also, I, I believe uh, Laos uh, recently has also taken delivery of uh, Pfizer from the U.S. So mm. there is no uh, sort of uh, zero-sum game uh, in trying to uh, defeat a common enemy, a common enemy of humanity in right. which uh, many countries can work together. Not only against the pandemic, but also other agendas, for example, Belt and Road Initiative, uh, uh, which China worked with many other partners. Uh, uh, many in ASEAN region have been involved. How do you see the implementation of that so far amid the challenge of a pandemic and the geopolitics, Mr. Song? Yeah, uh, ASEAN is a very important uh, cooperator uh, with uh, China uh, uh, on the BRI construction. Uh, although in the past uh, uh, about, uh, about half years we have uh, faced uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, influence, but uh, still uh, China ASEAN has made uh, a lot of progress in the BRI cooperation. For example, uh, China Laos uh, railway uh, uh, construction uh, has been nearly finished. And also China and ASEAN, the, the, uh, our mutual investment uh, has uh, still uh, grown very fast in the past uh, in, in last year, and also uh, some big programs uh, uh, is still uh, constructing uh, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for example, in Indonesia, in uh, Philippines, also in, uh, also in Thailand, uh, our joint uh, programs, uh, corporate programs, has been built uh, continuously. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in the future, I think uh, uh, China and ASEAN will invest to each, mother, uh, to each other more and more, and also our trade volume will become uh, bigger and bigger in the future. I see. Mr. Bupa Kong, what about the Belt and Road Initiative? Of course, it was controversial with the U.S. side. They, have, uh, they want to have their own uh, so-called program that is uh, uh, comparable uh, to the BRI. Uh, how, how are ASEAN countries for, from where you are are handling this? In general, I, th I thought that part of the success of bilateral trade situation, almost 700 billion this past year, is a proof that in a certain way, Bell and Road Initiative has really has worked at a certain point. And the high-speed train that has been through Laos, they, they will be done probably by next year mm -hmm. in Thailand. And that brought about a major trade exchange. And, and naturally, China has a huge advantage being so close to this proximity. And therefore, I don't see any reason why if both major rivalry between the US and, and, and China uh, uh, could be managed without a, a major disruption, I think China would, would benefit uh, with, with uh, uh, being, being close to this region. And that's how I see it. Mm. Mr. Lim. Yes, uh, the uh, Chinese uh, uh, BRI is one of the components uh, that re really helps uh, ASEAN with uh, connectivity infrastructure and projects. The pie of connectivity infrastructure is big enough uh, to accommodate many sources of funding, 
and certainly China is filling in a very important component of that funding. If you look at the geography of uh, ASEAN, you can see that it forms it is formed uh, primarily of two components: continental mainland of Southeast Asia and also maritime Southeast Asia. They are far dispersed and they are geographically far apart. So uh, the uh, BRI in the uh, connectivity project helps to uh, connect all these uh, uh, places uh, together mm. and um, uh, overcome the problem of uh, natural uh, obstacles. Uh, so that helps uh, ASEAN a lot, particularly in connectivity and also in the near uh, future with uh, connectivity online, uh, especially with the ambitions of ASEAN trying to uh, form the network of uh, smart cities. Yes. Uh, certainly China with its leading of uh, Industry 4.0 technologies will, will have uh, much to offer. Right. Before we go, um, we see RCEP as a regional trade mechanism has been very much applauded. Of course, people say it is not the highest level of agreement, but at least we have to start from somewhere. So that set a great example for the rest of the world. Uh, on that, and also the upcoming China ASEAN Expo, which is being held every year, how, how do you see the prospect of trade? And in some relationship, for example, China-US relations, or trade is hot, but politics is cold, at least for now. Uh, what about China and ASEAN? How do you see the trade relations vis-a-vis -vis the other aspects of the overall bilateral, if I could, or rather multilateral uh, 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 relations? Mr. Bopa Kong. I, I have seen really exponential growth within the past uh, 10 years, as you can see, in terms of practical matters, uh, a choppy online trade in Thailand flourished, and that's the Chinese company. And I foresee that this is a, a point of no return, that the integration, more integration between uh, China and ASEAN would, would continue to grow from, you know, the connectivity from the uh, ASEAN-China ASEAN standpoint in every level. So if a, a political conflict could be managed in a larger, you know, in, in whether in the Spratly Island region and, and elsewhere, I believe that it is a long-term stability, global stability in so many respects. And the Americans have to respect that in the future, we all have to live together, mm. and therefore there will benefit if, if there's uh, no bigger confrontation in the future. Mr. Lim. The uh, prospects of uh, ASEAN uh, as well as the trade with uh, China is very rosy in, uh, indeed. And so uh, many expect that uh, after this uh, pandemic, as the mm -hmm. pandemic evolves into an endemic, uh, the, bigger, the biggest challenge will be the economic uh, recovery. And here is where both regions can play a part. From the uh, ASEAN perspective, uh, mm -hmm. China re represents a very large uh, market uh, as well as uh, funding uh, for uh, connectivity infrastructure projects. At the same time, uh, for China, ASEAN is going to be an important plus one uh, strategy uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, Ch uh, ASEAN can offer an alternative uh, for uh, China uh, to uh, tide over uh, any uh, external shocks uh, to the world uh, economy. And so this represents a very important uh, sort of a future uh, for both uh, regions uh, to work uh, together. Got and it. It, uh, it will appear that uh, more barriers will break down and the next frontier is the digital frontier. And that's where there's a lot of prospects uh, for both uh, sides to work with each other, right. to tap into both uh, technologies uh, that they have to offer. And ASEAN certainly is going to be a very important test bit with its diversity uh, for Chinese technology as well. Mr. Song, final words also. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I'm op optimistic about China and ASEAN relations. Uh, for example, I think uh, in the future, uh, bilateral trade will continue to grow generally, and also uh, our bilateral relations will continue to become more and more friendly uh, in the future. Uh, and also, uh, this will benefit the whole region's uh, development and uh, to benefit the whole region's uh, people. Song Chinrun, Lin Tian Wai, Shang Bung Pra Kong, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate it, gentlemen.